Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira. If you're new here, hello. I have body dysmorphia. I have struggled with body image issues and disordered eating since as far back as I can remember. Much like most of us, especially young females and AFABs in this uh, patriarchal society, we were literally brought up to hate our bodies so that big companies and big corporations and the patriarchy could benefit from our insecurities. So I am all about breaking that shit down. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some mindset shifts and tips that I have done to lessen my body image issues. Now, keep in mind, I still have body dysmorphia. I still look in the mirror and think I'm looking in a funhouse mirror, okay? But I do feel a lot more neutral about my body. And that to me is the goal. <laughs> So these are just things that have helped me. They might help you, I don't know. I'm just gonna share them and hopefully you resonate. Let me know if you do. One thing I've stopped doing is constantly checking my body in the mirror. I have had a really bad habit of constant body checking, which means staring at myself in the mirror for very extended periods of time, picking apart little features on my body that look wrong to me or don't fit the beauty standard. But like the longer I look at it, the more distorted my image in the mirror looks. Whenever I like look in the mirror, catch a glimpse of myself, I would like turn to the side and like check my belly and see how far it comes out. You know what I mean? But I've been trying not to do that because it doesn't get me anywhere. It does not help. It just makes me feel worse. Number two, another thing that was really causing me a lot of distress was wearing clothes that were uncomfortable and like made my body feel ill. I had a habit of wearing like really high-waisted, tight, vintage jeans. I wore them because they sucked in my tummy, but I would have to like, like flex my abs so hard and like lay down on the bed in order to zip them up. But then like the whole day I would have this like horrible stomach cramp. So that was not a good idea. I donated and sold all of my old pants that were too tight on me. Nowadays, I try not to suck in when I try on pants. I've resorted to just wearing sweatpants a lot of the time or I'll buy pants that are like two sizes too big, our bodies are literally always changing sizes. So I give myself a little bit of extra room when I buy pants. Another kind of mindset shift that I had to make uh, in terms of exercising was instead of forcing myself to do workouts that I hated, I just stopped doing stuff that I didn't want to do. I feel like if you're dreading going to an exercise class or dreading doing a workout, then it's probably your body be sending you signals being like, I don't really wanna do this. And so instead I've just been doing like really chill, low impact yoga classes or even Pilates sometimes, but I, I won't force myself to do workouts if I don't wanna do them. So that's kind of retraining my brain in a way, being like, I am going to give you the type of exercise that is going to be the kindest on my body. I do a lot of yoga, mainly yoga, honestly. It's good for your body. It both relaxes the muscle tension and builds muscle. Paired with deep breathing, that is my favorite type of exercise. So I found something that works for me and works best for my body and my body is happy afterwards. This one is like easier said than done, but just knowing that your body is constantly changing. It was really harming me comparing my body to my teenage body or my body like pre-pandemic. I would like look at pictures of myself and be like, how did I let myself go? That wasn't even in my control. They change in terms of also what we're going through, right? So long story short, I try not to compare my body to my past self or people around me. I know that's like really fucking hard to do, but uh, it's just good to keep in mind. Book recommendation. So I'm reading this book called Body Neutral. It's by Jesse Neeland. When it says a revolutionary guide to overcoming body image issues, it ain't lying. Sometimes books just like come to me exactly when I need them. But in this book, she focuses on body neutrality, not necessarily loving your body because she said realistically, that's really hard for a lot of us to do. Going from having body image issues and possibly hating our appearance to then put all this pressure on ourselves to suddenly like 
become in love with our appearance. Hopefully I do one day get to that level, but for now, body neutrality is a really good stepping stone or maybe it's your end goal. This one might be an obvious one, but consume less social media that has you feeling bad about your body. So if you're following fitness accounts, personal trainers, Instagrams, people whose bodies you compare yourself to. What I did was literally just like unfollow anyone who when their picture popped up, I felt bad about myself. This also applies to any physical people that you're like actually seeing in your everyday life or spaces that make you feel bad about your body. For example, surrounding yourself with people who don't talk shit about their bodies all day, because if you're hanging around that, you're more likely to pick up on that. Also, the type of like fitness studio you might go to. So I was going to this one fitness studio that really focused on aesthetics, looking toned and having flat abs and all the instructors looked like literal supermodels going to this fitness studio subconsciously made me feel bad about myself. This place was more focused on working out for aesthetics and appearance versus working out because it's good for you. So now I've kind of found fitness studios and yoga studios and spaces that are very body positive, body inclusive and body neutral. The emphasis is on mindful movement, being in your body and feeling how it feels when you do the, the movements and the workouts. I've also been gravitating towards like classes that are in a dimly lit room. That really helps because you can't really see people around you. People aren't really looking at you cause it's too dark. So that like eases a lot of the pressure on like, do I look weird right now? Am I not doing this properly? And it's more about like your internal journey when you're doing the movement. It encourages me to do my fitness classes because it's not like a pressure. Like I need to work out to fit this beauty standard. It's like, I want to work out because it feels good. And the last thing I want to mention is I'll provide a little bit of a background on like my upbringing. So I grew up modeling. My family was in the modeling industry. A lot of the value was placed on how I look. Also, my income was placed on how I look. And my mom was also very, <laughs> she's like what you would call an almond mom. This is a good thing and a bad thing. She showed me what eating healthy looks like. She gave me a really good basis of like nutrition, which I'm very grateful for, but it was almost too much for me that I, I didn't get to eat foods that I wanted to eat. I didn't get to eat like bagels very often or muffins. So. Growing up in that atmosphere, I developed a lot of disordered eating patterns and I would berate myself for eating a burger or french fries or something, you know, fast food. I was never allowed to eat those things when I was younger. So now I allow myself to eat those things. Did it result in me gaining a little bit of weight? Yes. But was it crucial to do that in order to balance out my view on eating? Yes. I kind of just eat intuitively. I allow my body to tell me what to fuel me with. So bitch, if you want a burger, eat a burger. You know what I mean? Cure Graves approves of that message. <laughs> In me gaining a more positive body image, I am allowing myself to eat more foods that are deemed unhealthy, even though all food is good. Food is fuel. We need food to fuel our bodies or else we will not be alive. For the past couple years, I have been eating a little bit more foods that are deemed unhealthy, almost to give my body what it's been craving this whole time. I'll go to the store and pick up foods that my child self really loved and I'll eat them now as an adult and it like satisfies my body's craving of it. If you've been in the habit of going on extremely restrictive diets and you're trying to heal your body image, sometimes you need to go in the complete opposite direction and eat whatever you're fucking craving to satiate that part of you and to let your brain and your body know that we are not going into like starvation mode. We're not going into survival mode anymore. Like we have our needs met. We have 
more than enough food. So I hope those resonated with you. I probably have more. I'll just have to think about them. So if this video really helped you, let me know in the comments below. And if you want a part two, I can do a part two. I can talk about body image all day long. I am still healing. I am still figuring out what's working best for me, but I'm getting better and you can too. I believe in you, I really do. Again, these are things that have helped me. They might not necessarily help you in your situation, but if they do, that's fucking awesome. I love you. You are more than just your body. You are a whole ass valuable human being with innate worth, so much creativity and talent and beauty within you that your body is the least interesting thing about you. I know that that's sometimes like really, really jarring to hear because we've placed so much value on our physical appearances, especially as women and AFAB folks. I'm non-binary, but I really resonate with the female experience. Obviously I've been conditioned female. It's not your fault that you hate your body. It's not your fault that you have body image issues. This is a result of the type of society we were brought up in. This is a result of all the horrible toxic media that we've consumed unknowingly. It's exhausting. It's exhausting to grow up in a society like this. So however you're feeling about your body today, it's okay. If you look in the mirror and don't like what you see, it's okay. And it's fucking understandable. <laughs> so understandable. Healing is possible for you. It's a long journey, okay? Sometimes this takes years to dismantle the old programming. I'm gonna do the book plug again, okay? Go pick yourself up a copy of this shit. This is perspective shifting. Can I also say that body image issues have a lot to do too with your sex life. Those two things overlap a lot, okay? I was not wanting sex for the longest time because I was so uncomfortable in my body. That's another topic. And if you want me to talk about it, I will. Just saying. That is all for today. I love you. I really hope you got something out of this video. Let me know if you did. And you are enough and you are worthy as a human being. And you are fucking awesome. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you.